Hello everyone, photographer Andre Designs here with a new retouch video. And today we'll be retouching this image. I did a behind the scenes for this photo shoot recently. Well, not recently, some time ago. I'm just gonna put a link in the description. Well, I'm gonna put the, the link in the, in the card at the top here. So you guys can watch the behind the scenes. And I was just editing one of the images for my Instagram page. And I think to myself, you know what? Let me do a retouch video. Um, so I can, you know, upload it to my YouTube channel. All right, so what I did, because I started the process, this is the original image before I started the editing. So what I did was to, uh, what I went to um, uh, Windows and then I went down to Properties. And when I go to Properties, I actually remove the background. But before I remove the background, I actually created a new background by sampling a color from um, this background here. And then I um, created a new layer and then I went to remove background by using the remove background option right here. And then I just apply a color in the background here. I just use the brush and my brush was at 35% uh, and I just click once and created the color in the background. So this is the color, this is the white light in the background basically. And this is the image on top that I removed the background for. So if I if I um, disable this, you'll see the original image. I enable. Good. So now I'm going to do some retouching of this image. I'm going to create a new layer. Control Shift Alt E. It's raining outside. If you're hearing the thunder, it's raining outside right now. All right. So what I'm going to do now? Oh, I didn't tell you guys what I used to take this image. I think I was using. Yeah, it was a Sony A7 III, the third 28 to 75 millimeter lens, and my shutter speed was 106.3 for the aperture and 100 for the ISO. All right. So I created a new layer because I'm comfortable with what I've done so far with the background and everything, the cutting out of the image. So now I'm just going to go to frequency separation, which you can download that by using the link in the description. It takes it to my website and you can download it from there. Uh, my radius is gonna be 6.4 as you can see there. And I'm just gonna go down to the low frequency layer. Then I'm gonna go over here to where it says uh, the mixer brush. The mixer brush is normally nested on the brush. I took mine out. You can just come right here and you can go to edit and you can just take your brush out. Let me look for the mixer brush. So my mixer brush is B and, well, my mixer brush is M and the brush is B. So you can just pull them from this side over here, as easy as that. All right, so now I'm just going to um, clean up our skin. I'm gonna to go to the high frequency layer. I'm not gonna use the mixer brush yet. I'm gonna press J on the keyboard for the patch tool. I'm not gonna use the patch tool though. I'm gonna use the spot healing brush tool. I'm gonna to get it bigger by using the bracket on the keyboard. And then I'm just gonna zoom the image in some more to about right there. And then I'm going to remove the blemishes. You want to ensure that the brush is as small as the blemish so it does not cause any blushy type of look on the image. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, to be honest, it's faster if I use the... You know what? I'm going to use the patch tool. I move a little bit faster using the patch tool. Spot healing brush is going to take a little time and I don't want to take a long time to do the removal of the blemishes. I'm going to keep this image as natural as possible. I, I, I realize that sometimes I, I go overboard when I'm editing the images using the mixer brush. But for this image, this video might, might take a little longer time because I, I want it to look as natural as possible. I don't want to soften our skin too much or flatten our skin too much. So, yeah. The most important thing right now is to remove the blemish, the blemishes from the skin because that would basically help the retouch process. I really want to learn how to do um, micro dodge and burning so I don't have to use frequency separation too much you know because I want my images to look a certain way all right I don't think I like I'm gonna create a new layer I'm not gonna use this 
bring a separation action with to do the cleaning up of the image. I'm just gonna use a, 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 a layer instead. Because when I'm using the frequent separation action, uh, the blemishes are not removing like how I want it to remove. It's still leaving like some part of the blemish there. Like it's blurred out a little bit. And I don't want that. I want it to be removed. So since of late, I start removing the blemishes. Well, if you've seen most of my videos, you'll notice that I remove most of the blemishes on a layer instead of using the... Um, what do you call it? Freaking separation, high layer. All right. She did her own makeup as well. It's been a while since I've worked with a makeup artist, to be honest. Most of my talents, they do their own makeup or if I'm shooting with some of my talents are actually makeup artists so they do their own makeup so yeah but trust me since I've been getting a lot of jobs now I really don't have time to go out and do any behind the scenes uh, most of my videos now are going to be like old images that I've taken before because I honestly don't have the time to do personal projects right this moment and trust me, in December, it's going to be the same thing. Uh, and I really don't, I'm not going to have the time in December to do um, personal projects. And I said to myself once that, you know what, because I know that I'm going to get real busy. I'm just going to do a lot of videos and then schedule them. But I didn't get around to do that at all. All right, so I think I am done with the... removal of blemishes so now i'm going to do the frequent separation again so i'm going to go up to the top here the frequent separation i'm going to keep my radius at six i'm going to come down here to the low frequency layer then i'm going to come over here to the mixer brush and i'm going to change my mixer brush wet to about uh, nine yeah nine all right so this is the part now where i have to be careful of the edits i'm doing now because i don't want the image to look fake at all so i'm gonna keep it as natural as possible let me see before after as natural as possible i don't want the image to look too soft because i've noticed and when you notice that you're going overboard that's a good thing and you you should make adjustments to your images so i'm not gonna go overboard with this image and I'm glad that her makeup is, you know, light. I really like that. So I'm just evening out that section. Alright, so so far, let me see. It looks good. It does not look fake at all. It looks natural as possible. So if you want your image to look as natural as possible, keep your wet as low as you can. Normally, when I just started using the mixer brush, my wet used to be at two. And I realized that bringing the wet higher will, it will basically retouch the image a little bit faster. It will soften the image a little bit faster. But I noticed that the images look a bit overdone and you do not want your images to look like plastic so yeah so that is the so let's look at the before and after for this so before after let's do the before and after for the dodge and for the um frequent separation only that's the before let me scroll this up and that's the after so subtle as possible let me try to just blend it out a little bit more perfect good so what I'm gonna do now is to do some uh, dodge and burning so I'm gonna start with a dodge and I'm gonna come over here to the brush but I could just press B on the keyboard for the brush why is it that I have the brush on the mixer brush hold on I'm going to edit 
and take the brush out from mixer brush they stand alone good so i'm gonna hit the brush i'm gonna put my brush flow at one percent and then um the nose bridge is already highlighted but i'm just gonna highlight right above it a little bit let's look at the before and after good and then under the eye just going to highlight it as well forehead i'm just gonna highlight that a little bit more as well as well and the chin as well as well good so let's look at the as you can see over here you can see what i've done so i did the um forehead the center of the between the eyebrows the chin and the cheeks so that's the before that's the after now i'm gonna go dodge and i'm basically gonna work on the dark areas still at one percent for the flow so now i'm shaping the face all right that looks good i'm gonna come down to the chest and do the same thing yeah i don't think i need to do much okay that's good all right so right here is not blended i got i need to blend it out a little bit I'm gonna see if I can blend it up by using um, dodge as well. So I'm just gonna dodge it and see if I can blend it out. And it worked. So let's look at the before and after for that. So before, after. I like how that look. All right, what's happening right here? Not sure, but let me just come here right here I'm going to press um, L on the keyboard for the lasso tool I'm just gonna try to blend here a bit more by going to filter then blur Gaussian blur move this over all right good so now it's better I like that good let me see if I can do here as well oh that's too close here as well um gaussian blur good all right one thing guys you have to be careful when you're cutting out your image you have to look back on the image and ensure that you don't have this issue right here all right the good thing about this image is that it's going to be going on instagram so you will not notice it but when you remove the background you have to go back in and ensure that you fix certain things like this because if the image is going to be printed and it's going to be a large print you'll definitely see it trust me so you have to be careful all right so i think i'm okay with what i've done so far i think i want to do some color grading now before i do the color grading though let me work on the eyes so i'm going to come up to the top here and then we'll go to clean eyes and teeth and then get my brush put my brush flow at 23 uh 34 percent and then i'm just going to brush the eyes They're a little bit red. Good, I like that. Then let's before and after. Then I'm just gonna brighten the eyes a little bit by using the curves. Bring this up. And then I'm gonna invert the curve by using control I. Then I'm gonna zoom up. I'm still gonna stay at um, 20, 34%. Get it smaller by using the key, the bracket on the keyboard. And I'm just gonna do this. All right, that's it. Good. So let's look at before and after for the brightening of the eyes. Before, after. Good. All right. I think I like this. I don't think I need to do anything more. I kind of feel like hair is not blended properly. Hmm. Let me see if I can just use the brush only and put this at 1%. Then I'm going to sample this dark area right here and just, just make everything dark coming down. Let me see, before and after. That looks uh, okay-ish. Let me just put this, let me go to color. Yeah. All right, I think I like that. All right. 
still not sure about right here. Let me go back to normal. Or maybe, let me try it over there. Screen. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to normal and then lower the opacity a little bit. Good. All right, so that's done. So, hmm. I'm just gonna do Control Shift Alt E, and then I'm gonna come to the top uh, here and go to Camera Raw. All right, I'm gonna try my. Oh no, I don't like how this look. I was gonna do my um, my preset that I've created, but I'm not gonna do that. So I'm just gonna adjust the colors i'm gonna come down here under collaboration this is 2020 camera raw guys so if your camera raw looks different it's because i'm using adobe 2020 so i'm just gonna bring my um blue uh, over to the hue section let me see right hue right there then i'm gonna come i'm gonna go to the top and then i'm gonna go to dehaze and bring the dehaze in a little bit like that good then shadows out of la shadows like that contrast maybe about five no two you don't want to add too much of anything that you're adding <laughs> yeah all right this is i think this well let me try this and see what this does okay so this is going to work for the skin i'm just going to minus a little bit out of the skin like that good so let's look at it before and after for what i've done so far all right that's it so let me just press ok now and then i'm gonna add some blue in the shadows i think that's too much i'm not gonna add any blue in the shadows um yeah no blue in the shadows um but let me try color lookup and lower the opacity yeah i think i like that so that's it for the image i'm just going to create a new layer as a matter of fact i'm just gonna yeah it's a new layer then i'm gonna save it because i was taking because i took this from um lightroom i'm just gonna save it back into lightroom now that's what i do with all my images i save it to lightroom and then i export it to wherever i like to export it at the full size image so now i'm gonna upload this to instagram so what i'm gonna do now is to come here and i'm going to Wait, I'm going to put my logo on it first. So I'm, I have an action for my logo, or for my watermark. I'm going to put my watermark right there. Like that. And then I'm just going to save for Instagram. I have a shortcut for to save for Instagram. This is from my Dropbox. But you can just come to File, Export, Save for Web. And then you want to change this section here to 1080. And then you just click save and get it smaller. You just click save and it will just take it to where you want to save it. And then you upload it to Instagram. Do not try to upload the full image to Instagram because it's going to take a long time. And also um, the image will not look that good. So yeah, so that is it guys. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for another video. Bye-bye.